Hello, hello everyone, hello, I'm Alex Koloskov, welcome to Friday Photo Talk at 40G School of Photography. Today is Friday, May 15th, okay, 1 p.m. Pacific time, this is uh, the time of the day when we do it every, every week, right, every week, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time. If uh, you have not subscribed to 40 channel, time to do this uh, because you're going to receive a notification once we are live. So, hello everyone, I see how many Australia, Malta, Montreal, uh, Saudi Arabia, wow, Italy, Poland, Brazil, Sweden. How are you doing guys? How is uh, all this coronavirus stuff uh, at your place? It's too big, yeah, I know. Uh, you still uh, staying in shelter or getting better? Just, you know, give me a few words. Plus, uh, I will understand uh, how do you hear me, how you see me. So everything is fine and we are ready. Uh, because today, today, we'll be doing some jewelry photography. Uh, actually, we'll be exploring uh, the, well, I don't need you here. We'll be exploring a cone. We did a little bit uh, before some other talk, uh, but uh, today uh, we'll shoot a little bit more with the photocon, photography con. Uh, we'll try to shoot jewelry, we'll try to shoot some watches, uh, and uh, we'll be doing the critique and review and finding the winner from our previous 40G challenge, and that was glossy subject. Uh, we do have a set of submissions. I want to show you. So uh, there are some really cool stuff uh, going on here. I have many, many images that I'm going to talk about and find the winner at the end of this show, okay? So let me switch back. And let's see. Actually, actually, we can bring Uh, just go and find, okay, first, oh, then, congrats, you had your first architectural uh, shoot for this week, so, uh, looks like things coming back to life, right? Uh, still staying home in Texas, uh, starting to open up, yeah, Carla, it looks like uh, we'll be the last, I mean, California will be the last who will open, I think, um, in US, but not sure when it will happen, uh, Poland, in Vietnam, oh, interesting. How it's in Vietnam? Is it, is it same thing going on? Stay in shelter and you know hospitals and all this stuff. The sound is not in sync. Hmm. Alan saying sound is not sync. Uh, guys, is it true or who's experienced issue with sound? So anyway, uh, send me uh, some feedback so I'll know what is going on. Let me see the. Yeah, stream looks good. Stream health, always good. Yeah, it's actually excellent. So, super cool. Okay, cool. Uh, glad to know. Alrighty. So, jewelry photography. How many of you have experienced uh, shooting jewelry? Uh, not, you know, just. I, I tried it with your with my phone, but uh, something uh, commercial, meaning uh, how many from you guys who's watching uh, received money for the jewelry that you photographed for your client? So it was pure uh, commercial shot, meaning that you got the compensation for this. Oh, really? Jewelers opening in California? That's cool. Even... So, it's getting better, getting better. <laughs> South Carolina, okay, Tim, right to here, Columbia. And I, I would expect, you know, some of you have experience with jewelry, uh, some of, uh, from you may not have. And, uh, you know, jewelry is one of those uh, types of photography where you need probably 
to know, I mean, you need to know a lot, a lot of lighting and have, uh, well, huge experience in uh, shooting macro things uh, in the studio. Uh, it's the most uh, compl complex because of uh, nature. It's too glossy. It has uh, many cases gemstones that are semi-transparent, uh, polished, and you know all kind of different surfaces from you know uh, from you know, pearls to diamonds or you know, and anything in between. And uh, it's quite different. It could be quite different for different surface. You know uh, how to uh, shoot, how to highlight. And uh, the, I'll try to kind of put something very simple. It won't be, you know, uh, uh, the solution for everything. But at least uh, I hope uh, that I'm going to show you will help uh, those of you who doesn't have much experience, but uh, still do have, uh, you know, equipment uh, to shoot, meaning at least two or three lights. And uh, it may be strobe, it may be not strobe. Have a macro lens and, uh, well, it will help them to, to get a decent shot of, well, most of jewelry things, okay? Um, okay, so you should from your own store where uh, work but never receive the money. Okay, well, it's like if you own a, story, a store and you sell stuff there, I mean, jewelry, and if you shoot, it's still kind of commercial work, right? You do, you don't, you do it for, uh, to sell your products, uh, which is great. Uh, I need to get the fire in diamonds. I had great luck with opals. Well, opals, they have uh, way more things uh, to glow inside. At least, well, from my experience, opal is kind of, it's probably easier to shoot because it has, you know, maybe not all opals, but uh, they, they more sparkly by, uh, by themselves. Uh, diamonds, they sort of, well, all the colors and uh, everything comes from uh, faceting, right? Uh, faceting, faceting, how you call it, from all these ages, and uh, you know the reflection, refractions, all these internal reflections. So it's it's a little bit, uh, well, it's little, probably a little bit different. Okay, fashion jewelry. Well, it's it probably it's easier to shoot uh, jewelry on a model. I mean, not easy, but it's not really macro. So uh, the very first thing that you need to, well, you guys, I'm sure you know it, uh, that you need to have a macro lens, right? A macro lens, that's something that will uh, let you to shoot really close, close up. Uh, macro lens is um, defined basically by magnification ratio, right? Magnification ratio is ability to lens to, uh, well, how much it can magnify thing. Uh, usually, most of the lenses uh, can go up to one to one, so it's not really magnification, but at least it's not uh, making things smaller. Uh, one to one is a true macro lens. If you see the lens with where it says one to one magnification ratio, it will definitely work for your uh, for jewelry shots. Uh, if you have a crop sensor camera, it's interesting because uh, the lens with one to one magnification ratio that made for full frame. On a crop sensor, it will be actually 1.6 to 1. So it's, it will be magnified. Uh, it will be even closer than on the full frame sensor, which sometimes could be cool, uh, and especially considering that, well, you don't need to have that close, so you can uh, pull it a little bit uh, further away and get a little bit uh, deeper depth of field. Depth of field is a big issue uh, when shoot jewelry because you can get uh, most of the time full focus on the whole subject in one shot. It's just impossible. I'll try to uh, shoot here at, uh, let's say, F18, but it's too much. Uh, it's F15, probably the, on a really good lens. Uh, it's the highest level, but if you shoot commercially for, um, not for e-commerce, you know, some like hundreds of items, but uh, you shoot uh, for, well, advertisement, something that can be used on billboards, it's better to uh, shoot uh, around F11 maybe, F13, uh, and do focus stacking, so to get the maximum quality. But anyway, uh, sometimes it's possible to shoot in one uh, shot if uh, the requirements for the focus is kind of not that, uh, not that much. And if you have crop sensor camera, it's like an advantage, sort of, because uh, you get in deeper depths of field. Of course, if you have full frame, you can just, you know, pull a little bit uh, further away and then crop, it will be the same thing. But, well, you need to do it uh, intentionally, right? 
Okay, so let's see. I uh, use 100 millimeters f 2.8L. Yes, it's cool stuff. Uh, I always found that uh, it's very hard to get a good photo of diamond with color uh, showing. They tend to look overexposed or flat colors uh, show better in video. Well, yes, uh, Russ saying, if you seen guys, uh, our instructor and um, his course um, and actually interview with him, uh, let me show you something that uh, we do have something to show you. Uh, Vadim shows, ah, it, I couldn't find it for some reason. Oh no, it is, it is here. So uh, Vadim Shilin, okay, uh, Vadim Shilin is um, the photographer uh, and uh, we had him a few uh, Fridays ago and uh, he has a course uh, not for jewelry uh, photography but for the business of uh, jewelry photography and uh, he was answering questions about uh, diamonds and in many cases in many cases uh, photographers add some colors uh, slight colors uh, uh, in post-production that's completely fine if you want to make diamond uh, you know this kind of little bluish or whatever uh, so it's it's all post-production okay uh, let's start uh, to do something, right? It's getting hot here, man. Okay. So what I have uh, beside all this, let me switch. Uh, and we have some lights going on. Okay. So. Not good? Yeah, it's good. We're gonna use the cone, okay? And here's our cone. I'm gonna show you how I mounted it and how it looks like. If you don't have much gear, if you don't have much money to buy, you know, uh, lots of stuff, but you still want to shoot jewelry, you can do it yourself or uh, you can buy things like this. Uh, this is plexiglass, actually bent into this uh, cone shape. Um, I think it's Foba. They sell it for like $500. You can judge, you know, how much <laughs> expensive it is uh, for just a piece of plexiglass. But basically, this is uh, what we use um, to shoot uh, jewelry. Even though many photographers never use cone, many jewelry photographers, like again, uh, Vadim Schilling, he do not use cone at all, he said. You can check uh, Epic Mind Studio. Mm -hmm. One second, I'll show you. So you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you know, guys, uh, send send link to uh, Vadim's uh, portfolio, please, on the chat. So epicmindstudio.com. He never used a cone. But it's simplest way uh, to, to get a decent re result for most of the jewelry. So I'm going to use it uh, right now because, again, uh, I want to show you that it's, it's possible and it's relatively simple. You don't need much light, you don't need to, um, to know actually uh, and to have much experience because this thing can forgive a lot. But of course, with some drawbacks, with some uh, limitations. And uh, I made this uh, mount myself, okay? Uh, just a rod that connected to the articulated arm, actually it's a clamp uh, that I uh, mount on on the boom stand, you see it, right? If you don't see it, I'm gonna bring it here. In front of the camera, okay? So it just hangs there and uh, the cool stuff that I can easily, uh, well, do whatever I want. I can uh, move it anywhere. The drawback that it's actually kind of a little bit bulky. Let me see what is going on here, guys, one second. Uh, just a single strobe unit that may add to others later on. Yeah. For for those of you who doesn't have much strobes yet or any lighting, speed lights will work well for this. It's it's really it's really just any speed light, especially uh, speed lights that are not expensive and um, 
it's about $60 speed lights. Uh, without any TTL stuff, you don't need this to use them in the studio. Uh, you can buy just simplest speed light, the most powerful, but uh, without any additional features. And uh, it just makes sure that it has optical slave, built-in slave. And if it has some trigger, the connection for the wired trigger, it's even better because you can connect camera and use it as a mono light. It's $60 light, really. Uh, I, I was, well, I'm talking a lot about this all the time. If uh, you search on you know, Amazon, uh, it will be, uh, no. Amazon, where is Amazon? So, speed light. Right? Anything will work, especially these days when uh, they they really powerful and not expensive, like this one, right? Godox, $65. Tons of power. Okay? Vadim's course, thank you. Yes, uh, this is Vadim's course. And uh, what, why I was uh, talking about Vadim, uh, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't use cone, okay? How about mixing light from different uh, manufacturer? Any significant drawbacks, uh, like discoloration, or it's insignificant, really? Well, it all depends uh, from many things. It's possible to mix light from different manufacturers. I don't think uh, I see big problem with this, but it all uh, comes into how uh, con the color consistency, basically. The color uh, should be the same, color temperature of the strobe. And uh, this is where it can be different. It actually can be different even with the same manufacturer, but different, uh, let's say, light modifiers. Uh, different manufacturer uh, soft boxes, for example, especially not expensive soft boxes, they will give you uh, quite different, well, they will give you some shift, color shift, and it's, it's, it's not a good thing. So uh, buy uh, at least uh, same brand of soft boxes. It helps. Okay, so to, uh, before we start shooting jewelry, I have this uh, super cool thing, <laughs> uh, the, the ball. Somebody was uh, uh, talking about, you know, shooting. Uh, like glossy balls on previous uh, Friday talk. By the way, guys, if, if you enjoy what we are doing here, please like this video, uh, share if you know the friend uh, who may benefit from it. Uh, so thank you for doing this. Okay, so this ball, I'm going to use it to explore uh, how uh, the cone works, because this is the universal kind of, you know, tester and universal uh, mirror, if you want. It kind of shows everything. And I'm going to mount it kind of cool way. I have this uh, mount that's uh, going to stick on top of the C-stand. And then magnets. There are, you know, those new magnets. They're super, super hard. And, I mean, they're super strong. <laughs> super strong. And uh, the cool thing that I can always, uh, you know, put something in between, let's say a piece of plexiglass on top, and if it's metal, boom, it all stays. It's, it's relatively, you know, it's not going to away that easy. So we can use it here just to hold. And uh, let's, um, yeah, let's use uh, this white, for example. We can use something else, but uh, the simplest thing is to use white piece of plexiglass, okay? And I'm going to mount it on this C stand. Okay, I'm gonna stick inside the cone, right? This is how it works. So we'll explore how everything look like with this cone. Mm -hmm. One second, I'll show you what I see. Uh, what else? How we can get first product photography clients? Well, it's it's a big it's a good question. 
But I guess we need to have a separate uh, talk for these guys, uh, how to get first clients. This is something that, uh, well, there are different ways. There are different ways, but uh, you need to go out and tell people that you do this stuff. This is the simplest explanation, how to get your first client. Uh, everyone should know that you are good photographer, product photographer. So you need to be present everywhere, on all social media, on whatever, professionally, and kind of talking about this, uh, and eventually we'll get a client. This is the simplest way. This is kind of guerrilla marketing, right? Guerrilla, guerrilla, you know what I'm talking about. Um, OK, what else? Uh, how about mixing? OK, cool. So uh, what I'm doing here, I'm switching to the live view from the camera, so you know what is going on. OK. So the camera is seeing this ball, and well, you can see uh, what, how it looked like. It just something with the big hole in the middle, and actually I can wave hello, hello, <laughs> to you with that hole, right? I'm shooting at ISO 100. Actually, this is f18. Why not? And it's one two hundredth of a second shutter speed at X sync. If you know what I'm talking about, you know it, right? It's X sync of the camera because I'll be using strobes. I use wired connection because it's well, it works the best all the time. Uh, comparing to the wireless, you never know when you get some interference or whatever. And let's turn it on. It's getting hot, you know. Let me do the one more thing. I'm gonna turn on something else here. Okay. And let's explore it. Uh, you know it, how I'm doing the exploration, right? Any exploration with something new, new subject, new light modifier, I'm always using the light, okay, uh, spotlight, and uh, looking uh, to the viewfinder, trying to figure out what is going on and how it will look like. So we do have this surface, right, all the way till the end, to, till the edge of our cone, which basically covers the edge of the ball. Okay, this distance, uh, unfortunately you won't see this because we need to stick your camera really inside, but I'll show you something else. If it's like this, for example, if it's, uh, oh, one second. If it's like this, you see there, this is the age, you see the age of the cone, right? And now it's not really on the age of the ball. There is a gap, right? There is a gap that is visible. If we kind of magnify it, uh, you will, well, we will see that gap, right? Talking about this, this is the age of the cone and boom, again, if you have experience, it should be super easy, super simple for you to understand what is going on. Uh, if not, just think about what reflection do you see on your subject. If something doesn't work, for example, you want to have edge of your ball to be highlighted, well, to be, you know, taken care uh, by the cone, but it's not happening. So you need to find out what do you see on that part which is not here. How to find out? Let's kind of run light around the studio. And I can run it there, and boom, actually I found the place. You see what is going on? This is, you, you can see, right? Yeah. This is what is reflecting on that ball, on our subject. So this, the wall behind. Once I know it, this is, guys, this is super important, especially if you're the beginner in product photography. Once you understand how to calculate your reflections, reflection that you see through the camera, uh, reflections from the subject, you, you, you are like, like a god. You can be the god of product photography because you can do whatever you want if you know the places. So I know that light is coming from here. I can stand and see what is going on. The light is actually hello. It's a gap. It's a gap between, ah, I need to kind of move the camera. Uh, you know, let me do this. I'll, I'll try to do this for you guys. Mm. 
It might be a good idea to do. Why I didn't do it before, I don't know. So you see a little bit on the side. Okay. Not that much, but at least something. So this is where that light was coming from, right? The gap, this gap. And to remove it, I just naturally need to stick my stuff more inside the cone, then probably rotate the cone, right, to cover that gap. To completely cover that gap, right? So let's do this. OK, we do have a little gap still, right? You see it. It's a little bit over there, but it's not much. Actually, yeah, there is no light hitting this, so it's nothing. Uh, it's like, well, a test. <laughs> uh, meaning that exposure is good. We don't have any ambient light working. And now we have a little gap, which may be cool. If you need to completely eliminate it, what we need to do? I need to stick my stuff even more inside the cone. So it's really not seen outside world, this kind of eye, you know, that, that reflects everything. It's not seeing it. And it's like everywhere. All the time it's like this. All the mistakes that I see only comes from, you know, not understanding and not uh, be able to fix uh, reflection and stuff that's uh, uh, happening. Okay, now let's have some light. Uh, you see what is going on here, right? Uh, you see that, well, it just reflects stuff. So let's shoot. Tons of light, even more than we need probably. Uh, it's interesting, since everything is glossy inside, this is a white, white surface that we place our ball. We need actually a relatively small amount of uh, light, even for ISO 100, F18, F18, one to hundredth of a second. I'll tell you how much. OK, lamp, lamp when, lamp when is that one. Let's turn it off. So, and let's have this one a little bit less. So you can see only one light source that was, uh, that is off. So one light source. We have it right like this. And uh, the power is just 86 watt second. 86 watt second. F18, right? Yeah, and tons of light. If we add one more light over there, it will be even more. And let's, let's do this. Let's have some light on. Oh, man. It's all around. So just put two lights. We'll do a boom and see what is going on. Nothing really nice, right? Nothing, I mean, super fancy. Uh, you can see, let, let's look at this ball. Uh, what part look glossier for you? There is uh, really, there is distinguish between uh, upper part, right, and the bottom. The bottom, you understand what it is, what we see on the bottom. Who, who can tell me what do we see on the bottom in uh, this nice uh, line, horizontal kind of curve uh, that separates the ball to the bottom and top? What we see on the bottom, what reflects, I hope you understand it, right? It's the uh, tabletop. This is the table that we got, right? And look at the ball there. It has nice, uh, sort, of, sort of like a gradient, right? Because it reflects, uh, the table reflects everything around. So there are gradients because we use uh, spotlights. You can see we can use spotlights, right? Yes, exactly. 
and it has nice kind of smooth gradient, but it doesn't look glossy if, uh, let's say, we just, can we make it look, uh, maybe I can, let me check. Can I do, yeah, like this, for example. So look at this part, the bottom one. Does it look glossy for you if, let's say, we go like this and you don't see the edge? Does this look glossy? For me, it looks completely matte. It doesn't look like a glossy. It could be just perfect, nice matte ball, uh, which will look uh, like we have here. What looks glossy? This is what looks glossy, right? This is immediately looks glossy. Why? Actually, it's a little bit blurry. It would be better if uh, it would be a little bit more in the focus, you know. So let's put some focus here. Like that. Maybe a little bit more on the edge. Okay, so again, uh, jumping back to this. Right, this is where we have glossiness. It's glossy, the bottom is not. Because we have reflection, we have bright, we have dark, we have sharp part of lines, this is how it looks glossy. The bottom doesn't look glossy. Uh, this is super important to understand in jewelry photography. It's again, this is similar to uh, what we were talking before, right? It's very, very important to understand <laughs> and to do it right. Because I've seen so many uh, too smooth uh, jewelry shots that doesn't look like it's metal. Okay, so we have, uh, we know how, you know, all this stuff works, how it looks like. Uh, by the way, it's interesting if um, we can use, for example, uh, not uh, this uh, plexiglass, but uh, we can use something like a mirror, which may be cool. I'll try not to break it, actually. I'll try not to break it because of these magnets. So I'll do this all the way like that. On the mirror, it will be a different picture, right? Which kind of could be nice. Uh, just remember that sometimes um, well, you can get interesting results when you shoot things on completely on the mirror, on the glossy. And then, of course, most of the time you will need to cut it off, I mean, clip it out. Uh, but it will give you a really cool advantage because there is no table anymore. I mean, there is a table, but you can control it since it's uh, just direct reflection. It will show the same thing as the top. There is, I mean, definitely it will be the divider line, everything, but it's really, really uh, kind of uh, show all this, right? Whatever you do on top, it, it reflects. So now let's have some jewelry, something that I promised to do. So I don't need all of this, okay? I don't need all these fancy holders. What I need is the pin, just a little pin. And again, if you've been on my classes, uh, you know how I shoot stuff like this. I use small pieces of plexiglass with the magnet, okay? Magnet is under, sticky magnet, meaning it uh, it is a sticky pad uh, connected to the plate, uh, to that little plexiglass, and I can put it, you know, on top of this, and it just sits there. Super easy. It's small, so it's easy to, you know, use different cones or whatever, like modifiers. It doesn't take much of the reflection of the table, you understand it, right? Just because it has a small table. And most of the cases, we are clipping off uh, our jewelry from uh, the background anyway. So we don't really kind of uh, care about all this. But 
in terms of reflections, it's easier to create nice reflection if table is smaller. Just because, you understand why? Because we have more room to get that reflection. If table will cover this area, we cannot work with it. Now I can work, I can put some, let's say, reflectors or whatever here, and it will be reflected since we have a ball, sort of like a section of the ball, right? It's, it's a ring. Um, it, it, it will work. So smaller table is better. Is it clear? If not, shoot me the question, I'll be happy to answer. So I'm sticking it inside. And let's move it on and see what is going on there. Okay, what do we have? If you have anything, where is it? Oh, come on. Okay, here we go. Uh, but you know, let me rotate it a little bit. So it's facing like this, for example. OK. So what do we have here is uh, some awesome diamond. Of course, diamond. Of course, <laughs> no way that it's glass. It's super cool diamond. <laughs> and uh, the ring. You can see that it's quite out of focus, right? But when uh, we do shoot it, it will be, uh, well, it will be a little better focus. But first, let's play with lighting. Again, I'm not going to do uh, the focus stacking here because it just takes too much time. Uh, we don't, I don't want to do a two-hour workshop. I want to do it way shorter. Is it a macro lens? This. This is macro lens. Yes. Uh, this is macro lens. This is Sony uh, 90 millimeters macro lens f2.8. That's a really good lens. I mean, I, I have uh, the second best, actually probably it's good as this. It's 180 millimeters for Canon. I don't know Nikon. I never worked with Nikon. But uh, before I had a Canon system, and 180 millimeters f3.5 L macro lens is the best, especially because it's 180 millimeters. It's super cool. Uh, it lets you to uh, be further away from your subject, which is important, and you will see in a moment why it's important. Actually, you, even uh, you could understand by uh, looking at that ball. That opening for the lens can be smaller if your lens is farther away. Lens is closer to the subject, to the glossy, it will be more reflection from that lens, right? So the distance is a plus. More distance is easier to shoot, at least in my world, okay? So let's do what we can do here. We have this little guy sitting, and uh, if we, where is my, uh, let's examine it the same way that I do all the time. I do our examination to find out, you know, what area. Because again, we do not use soft boxes when there is a con. Forget about soft boxes. Well, of course, of course. If you know what you're doing, go ahead. I'm talking about uh, talking to beginners here. If you have soft box, throw it away. It will give you more trouble uh, problems than uh, solve. Than it will solve. Get just, uh, let's say, regular reflector, 70 degree or whatever, with honeycomb grid. Here I have 40 uh, degree honeycomb grid. You understand what it is, right? OK, honeycomb grid. And it's enough, it's good enough to create a spot that we can use for the cone. Cone is already, especially this cone, is super thick. It's white thick uh, the frosted plastic. It's soft box by itself. There is no need to use soft light behind it. There is no, because it will be diffused, double diffused, it's triple. You just lose the power. Uh, you will have uh, less ability to manipulate with shadows. So just a spotlight. So I have here a spotlight. Uh, it's a Fresnel lens that I mounted on brown color Pico light. And Fresnel lens is actually <laughs> aperture. It's a um, Bowens mount. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I have a bones mount here. And uh, yeah, since it's tube and tube, I just, you know, put it there. And we have, but yeah, 
first, actually, let's continue. So what we, look, what we are looking here is we're looking at the reflections through the viewfinder. And for jewelry, what is important? All the diamonds or gemstones or glass, whatever is there, should be sparkly. We need to find out where, OK, here we go. There is an area, right, on top, actually this one, on top of the cone, that really works for our, let's call it diamond. The top one, the large one. And actually, this little two next to it should be somewhere close to it, right? Yeah, this one on the one, and uh, this side for another one. So this area is for top, right? Oh, magnets. Google Apex magnets. Yeah, it's neodymium, neodymium magnets. It's just, uh, I mean, on Amazon, full of Amazon, different shapes. Uh, I have plenty of them, you know, with different configurations. It's super cool for any do-it-yourself projects, for any holders, because they're super strong. And if it's sticky on one side, it's just super cool. Anyway, uh, we got it here, right? This area, we know it. Now, what else? Uh, metal. Metal and little gemstones that face in the camera, you know, on the side of this ring. So let's see where we go. Oh, here we go. So this area, actually as expected, this area is where we can get reflection for our frontal panel. You see how nice it is, right? So we're going to highlight this, and we're going to highlight this. And we don't want to highlight that much, I mean, the rest, at least for now. Because we want to metal to be glossy. Uh, diamonds to be sparkly, how it works when we have something dark. You know, how we can see the star only at night? Only at night. No stars, no sparkly stuff during the day. So never turn uh, this stuff into the day. It should be sort of like a, almost like a night, but with some large stars, okay? Uh, does anyone know where the reflective magnetic ball came from? Uh, the ball, okay, guys, the ball is not magnetic at all. It just sits on these magnetic, on these neodymium magnets. Actually, it's, you see, ah, it's, oh, they all, most of them already broken. they really, really uh, fragile. So anyway, this is how it looks like, but it's, it's not magnetic. The ball from Amazon. They sell whatever you can imagine. <laughs> it's just metal ball. OK, so let's highlight this guy and see what will happen. Again, imagine that you don't have this fancy burn color stuff. What you would do? You would use speed light. You would use speed light. Uh, let me see if I can grab speed light. I have a few, but they not, may not be ready as is, but uh, maybe it is. So. Just for those of you who really kind of thinking that it cannot be done, let's have this light, okay? This is $60 Godox. Oh, no, you no, no, not Godox, but same, I guess, uh, same idea. Yunjino, uh, Yunjuno, yun, yun, never can pronounce it. Anyway, we have it here, okay? I have on S1, uh, meaning the slave mode, at... Uh, one fourth of its power, okay? One fourth of its power. And uh, even if I take away all these lights, so there is no light highlighting the subject, okay? There is no light highlighting the subject. You see dark picture. Let's have just one light. Okay, it's a single light. All these are not highlighting the subject. This is $60 light. So you can see we already can work with it. And if I have put two, the same thing. 60 plus 60, $120 <laughs> for the lighting. Yes, you need to spend some time or money to get the con. You understand it. Con is, well, uh, do it yourself con. You've seen it previously, right? I do it, uh, I made it with um, Savage Plastic. It's super easy, just, you know, cut it and uh, mount it uh, the way that you like. I have made many, and there are tons of courses. If you want to explore it, uh, check the uh, Jewelry Photography for e-commerce course. This is the recent one, the simplest one, and it covers a lot. It's just, you know, simple uh, Jewelry 
on a white background for e-commerce. Anyway, I'll try to, to show you. So this works as well. Just remember about it. I'm not going to use it because, well, not so convenient. But since we don't care about uh, all these fancy snoots or whatever, we just need to make sure the light is, is could be sort of like a snooted. And there is a uh, zoom head here, so it works perfectly just as is without even additional modifier. So let's put it back and let's get a little bit to play with it. Hopefully we can have some nice stuff. So let's say this light will be on top for the jewelry, okay? On top here, this highlight, and the other light will be on the bottom, highlighting other part of this, right? This part, you can always. The cool stuff about uh, this, by the way, guys, uh, I prefer it uh, over honeycomb grids because it's zoomable. It's zoom head, right? So it's between 12 and 40, 42 uh, degrees, right? It's a zoom head. It's not like I need to replace and have multiple honeycomb grids. It's just like this. So uh, let's have it here and uh, let's try to shoot it with some stuff. With this light and see what is going on. So, what do I have here? We have, what do you think do we have? What do we have? We have too much light on top, for sure, because part of our diamond is, it's not a diamond, of course, but it's kind of, it doesn't look good, it's overexposed. This is never. It's better to, give, uh, to have underexposed stuff. It's super easy to pull it uh, in post-processing, uh, right? Uh, but overexposed, most of the time, there is no way to recover it. So I need to lower the light. This is F18, F18, I saw 100. Anyway, uh, light number two have 50 watt second. My God, how it can be? I saw 100 and it's still, wow. Anyway, so I put 34 watt second, very low light on top. Uh, and uh, we should not get overexposure here, right? No, it is, uh, so it probably tells me that we can play a little bit with the, with the positioning. But to make it work, guys, we need to uh, play with one light at a time, because sometimes, since all this happening in very small area inside the cone, you never know which light bounces from where. So it's better to use always one light, set it to make sure that it works fine, and then add another one. So what I do, uh, I'm going to look at the viewfinder to get some decent light without much of overexposure. Okay. Let's have it a little bit higher so it's more, it covers more uh, larger area, but with less intensity. You understand? Just moving it. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I think it kind of looks better now. The top one. Yeah, I don't see much, but actually, why I don't see much? Probably need some glasses now. It's crazy. So leave it here. Probably a little bit. Okay. And let's add one more light at the bottom. So turn it on. Probably lower it to like 40 watt second or whatever. Get some So I can hit it really there and see what will happen. Okay, so we do have a uh, nice reflection, right, on the metal. It's kind of relatively uh, sharp reflection, talking about half of it, right? Talking about this. You see, but it looks super glossy. This is what the main idea when we shoot 
Julie as well as any other glossy things. You need to make sure that uh, there are areas that are really highlighted well, almost overexposed, and some areas with less light. This is what gives you Im immediately the look of the, of the glossy look, because this looks glossy, the bottom doesn't look glossy at all, right? Again, because bottom, reflecting the table, table doesn't have all this stuff, and this is not good. Okay? Watching only YouTube tutorials is not enough to be a good photographer. Yeah, definitely not enough. You need to do it, actually. <laughs> there is no learning happening when you watch stuff. Mostly it's entertaining, entertainment, right, when you watch. Uh, to make, to turn it into learning, you need to apply what you watch and get it inside your, how you call it, uh, competency. Com um, well, I'm not going to talk, I know, in Russian, but not in English. <laughs> you told all the secrets that jewelry photographers should know. Yes, exactly. Uh, this is the, the main idea, guys. This is the time when uh, I think it's, well, you need to share as much as possible to, you know, to survive because there is no reason uh, to, to make it work if you will be alone on this walk. Anyway, uh, what else? Let me uh, look uh, through the on the chat a little bit here because it's hard you know to talk and not to see uh, how to show detail reflection uh, Nemo tell me what the detail reflection is uh, test light Alex using, it's just mag light with a square shield, not really seems great uh, finding the right placement at finding, yeah, it seems really great. Yeah, the, the light that I use is this, uh, it just, uh, the, the main thing here is focusable light, so uh, the head kind of moves and there is a lens. Uh, and uh, it, it changed the pattern. So this is when you kind of make it really in focus. Uh, there is a pattern of the, it's a square. It's square because of the LED sensor. This is actually projection of LED sensor. I, I wish it wouldn't be that square because it doesn't look good, but anyway. Uh, but when you zoom it out a little bit, it's just nice spot. A little bit squarish, but at some point it turns not square. And what it's cool, because it can uh, mimic a uh, large light source, right? When I kind of zoom it out, I can highlight lots of things. And of course, it works way better with darker studio. For me, when I have all these lights around, it's not super uh, useful, but for you, it will. Um, so what the time is, yeah. Now it's time for me, guys, to jump to the question and answers. So let me tell you what I was doing. I'm not going to finish this shot because this is not uh, what I want to do uh, during this uh, talks. They just got too, too long because of this. We have courses if you want uh, to kind of to see how it's finalized. Uh, there is a course uh, that we put lots of effort. So you go and uh, buy it and you see yourself. Or you can use the techniques that I showed you uh, to get stuff working for you because it's enough uh, for the, to start. What I was showing you, it's enough to start all this uh, kind of tricks that I showed you. If you start just keeping them in mind, there are way more, of course. There are screens that uh, you can pull, put inside the cone, black screens to enhance shadows or make some nice glossy elements to be even more glossier. Uh, there, there are stuff, but this is the beginning and it's super, uh, super kind of easy to start this way. You just need to make the cone, uh, do it yourself cone, sort of. And uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, where you can get it. And actually, what is going on here? So, 
So, uh, for example, this watch I was uh, shooting with the cone. Uh, I have, I even have prepared uh, where is the watch uh, for you to shoot, but there is no time, unfortunately. Uh, with this, it's it's super uh, easy uh, to uh, to shoot watches in the cone. It's it's even easier <laughs> than uh, rings. But anyway, what I was talking about, uh, there is a jewelry photography for beginners, okay, and uh, there is a jewelry for e-commerce. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So there are two courses and that I would recommend to take if you want to kind of get deeper. If you are the very beginner, uh, this is do-it-yourself. This is what I call jewelry photography for beginners. Uh, lots of things there uh, with just LED lights. You see those little lamps. Even no strobes, but you can use strobe instead. Macro lens and the little camera. I was using small camera for this, uh, you know, cheap camera uh, for uh, for that uh, course, and it basically kind of shows you everything. Uh, for a little bit more advanced, it's here, and jewelry photography for e-commerce, uh, and we are, you know, shooting stuff like this on a white background, and uh, it kind of covers everything as well. That's plus, actually, you have cool deal. Let me let me post it for you uh, over here. So in case uh, you get free course if you buy it, uh, this one, the diamond drop, you get it free. Anyway, uh, let's do Q&A and I'll jump to a review. Well, basically we're doing uh, Q&A. Oh, like when you throw back to Photoshop how to know exactly right detail. Nemo, I'm not, uh, not really right detail. You mean the sharpness and everything? Sorry, I, I'm not. Now, uh, who makes that mono stand you use? Um, the, the C stand, that was Impact that I was using. I have uh, Avenger, I have Impact, I have Matthews. Matthew, I don't like uh, Matthews. But Avenger is the best, uh, probably. Impact uh, is a really good one, too. Uh, it's, it's maybe not as refined as, but you know, it's, it's less expensive and it's, it's super good. Uh, okay. Oh, three times. <laughs> Uh, LED light like uh, aperture via strobe. Uh, well, it's okay to use LED lights for jewelry, but uh, you need to make sure there is no vibration because the longer exposures, and uh, it should be a really steady environment. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, train station or whatever all around. It should be uh, better just concrete floor on the first floor and not large building. And uh, then you need to make sure that, you know, everything is remotely controlled, that you don't touch camera and all that stuff. It's when you shoot continuous lighting. The rest is all the same, so it doesn't matter. Any favorite software uh, to do photo stacking? Uh, I, you know, I don't do it uh, that much. I know that Helicon Focus is, uh, is the best uh, among photographers who do it uh, daily because of the speed and everything. Uh, I do it in Photoshop, it's completely fine. Um, so for me it was Photoshop, but uh, focus on the whole goal. Um, I forgot, just told you. <laughs> Helicon, Helicon focus is the best. <clears throat> now the big one with camera on it. Oh, I see, I see, it's Fatif stand. It's called studio stand. And there are many different. I got this one. They're super expensive when it, they knew they thousand and thousand dollars. If they heavy and large, and you know they have some motorized sometimes uh, stuff, uh, but you can buy it used locally because it's no way anyone can ship them, and you can. For example, this one, uh, Fatif. I think it's uh, in Italy or something in Milan, uh, made. So I bought it from Florida to Georgia, you know, that's where I was living uh, at that time. Uh, on Craigslist, I found it, and they brought it in an 18-wheeler truck. All this was, you know, we, we, it was not just regular shipping, so I paid for shipping like uh, about two or four hundred dollars, I forgot. So it was as expensive as the light itself, I mean the stand itself, but anyway, the new one, it's several thousand dollars. So if you can get it, uh, you know, locally for a few hundreds, it's, and this is probably how you can start it, or you can buy it. Okay, uh, Helicon is the best. Yeah, Ori, hello Ori, uh, Ori uh, Livni. Uh, he's a great jewelry photographer, and uh, well, he knows what he's talking about. Ori, yeah, good. 
uh, jewel that has diamonds and gold reflections of gold uh, may appear inside the diamond when this happens it's better to use black and white diamond treatment well n n no i mean you can do desaturation but you never turn it completely black and white it doesn't look good uh, sometimes for silver and stuff like this uh, and for diamonds you know for white gold it possible but again it should be then a little bit bluish hue added it can be black and white because it doesn't look well but yes desaturation is okay and uh, then you can uh, play i guess you can just uh, selectively uh, adjust colors in photoshop again uh, post-production is not really where i know uh, much uh jenny knows way better uh, but uh, from what i know this is how it is okay combo yeah combo is the best just joined Whoa, nice. No, you, you missed everything, yeah, but uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is recording. Okay, guys, now it's time uh, to do the review. Let me switch. So, we have submissions, and how it works is this. You need to submit 40 g challenge tag. Actually, let me... Yes, 40D challenge uh, on Instagram. And next week I'll pull uh, your image and review it. And uh, the winner will get any course uh, that he or she likes uh, from 40G. But it should be, actually there is uh, on live events, uh, 40G live events, uh, you can uh, read uh, the, uh, here you go to events and uh, read the conditions, okay. Uh, it should be new submission. You cannot add tag to the image that was submitted a long time ago. I'm not saying that you have to shoot this image. It's good when you shoot this image uh, for the challenge, but it's fine if you shoot it some time ago. But to be qualified, to be reviewed, you need to post it with the tag during this week, from this Friday till next Friday. And this is how we grab them, okay? So last time it was glossy shiny shiny uh shiny photography i would say uh challenge and this time it's a jewelry photography as you can guess uh, uh we're going to talk about your jewelry shots next uh, friday and choose the winner now i'm talking about uh previous 40 challenge okay ah oh, that's you <laughs> okay so uh i'll be rather quick we have a lot i mean so many images um uh, this one from Amir. Boom! One of my favorite, amazingly well done. Of course, lots of Photoshop, meaning that it's refined, it's, it's cleaned, it's, it's super cool, it's really nice. Uh, this is how glossy looks good, you know, when it's kind of, it's glass, just glass, but it's glossy glass. Uh, the minus here, Amir, uh, all these little gemstones that we see, I mean, all this, they too dark, okay? This is the issue, they are too dark. They should be brighter, they should be brighter than uh, this little, you know, metal, uh, how you call it, this thing that holds them. They should be brighter. And they're not bright. Uh, they should be as bright as this one, as, as this one. Maybe. Well, it still could be brighter. So a little shiny gemstones, it's super important to highlight them. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to show you guys but how to do this. But in, in short, you need to have somewhere a diffuser with light behind it that will highlight the spotlight through the diffuser, through the diffuser, we'll highlight these little gemstones. Okay, uh, the rest is super cool. This one, Ilya, uh, it's nice, it's super cool. A little bit more refinement in uh, Photoshop that uh, I would suggest, suggest you to make it a little bit glossier. Why it's not glossy? This line, uh, talking about your black line, it should have at least one sharp edge. If it's not sharp like this, it tells me that it's almost uh, like uh, brushed metal, not glossy metal. This is the biggest difference. If it's brushed metal, then it's fine, but it's not glossy. We need glossy. I assume that it's glossy. To make it uh, glossy, you need to make sure that sharp cut of line between dark and bright. Okay? Uh, oh, I see. That's perfume. So this one, uh, Amir again. And by the way, three maximum submissions, guys. Three submissions per entry. Three. If you have 30, it's great. Pick three and do it. 
Uh, this watch is cool. I like it. Uh, especially cool when we have this uh, super textured surface and uh, on contrast something glossy, something shiny. It's nice. Um, don't have much to talk about. Basically, it's done. It's done really well. Uh, there is little some you know probably improvements in Photoshop, but yeah, maybe like almost cleaning. Uh, maybe I don't want, but it, cool as well. Okay, one more. It's um, you know Jurlin model. Super cool. However, some of the th pieces are overexposed, like that one. It's overexposed. It's never good when it's overexposed. And some of them uh, doesn't have nice reflection. reflections, it's just, you know, dark. Since it's glossy, flat, little kind of like little mirrors, we need to catch a gradient on them. Just watch the previous Friday how I was showing you. Without gradient, it's either overexposed or too dark. You need to catch gradient. And I see that you had one um, umbrella and probably one softbox. Umbrella is not good for jewelry at all. I mean, umbrella light, no, no, no. it's too sharp. And for the, for the skin, it's, it's awesome, but it's not for uh, glossy stuff. Okay, next one. Any rate for this intro video? Intro video? Not sure. Uh, so this one, it's not glossy. I don't see glossy stuff here. It's not glossy. For me, I don't see any glossy element. It's nice, uh, kind of brushed metal. Looks pretty cool, but it's not glossy. It's easy to get like this reflection. It's easy. Or if it's glossy, then I don't see it again. It was not uh, done well. OK, uh, here we go. I see. This is yours, right? It's cool. It's actually nice. Uh, not much glossy stuff going on here. It's glossy, right? We have few reflections. But why we lost that glossiness? Um, all over the place. Why this part doesn't look glossy anymore? Why you lost it? It's cool, you know, you have this. And actually, it's, it's done well. It's done well. Just not much glossiness of it. Um, again, if you like it this way, that's fine. Uh, for me, it's a little bit too, actually, oh, you, you, you know, one second, guys. Uh, excuse me. I need to do something because you not seeing. Yeah, yeah, I need to make sure that you see the everything. Yeah, like this. OK. So it's a little bit too heavy at the bottom, a little bit too heavy. Uh, we have a nice uh, bright background, uh, maybe additional vignetting, darker area, corners will kind of help uh, to, to balance, because right now it's just too heavy. Anyway, uh, good, good work. Uh, let's uh, first attempt even even better. It's super cool uh, when it's first attempt uh, that good. Okay, this one, woo, it's nice. It's you know what's really nice here. This nice reflections, of course, on <laughs> the glossy. Um, yeah, actually, the, the really good image on any um, from any you know point of view. Remember that kettle that we had before, right? This one. This is what I'm talking about when telling you have sharp cutoff line. Look at this reflection. They super sharp. The edge of every this uh, long reflections over here. They sh super sharp, and it immediately tells us this is shiny uh, plastic in this case. It's shiny plastic. I know it may be Photoshop that you know you clean, but that's fine. This is how you do stuff. This is how you shoot shiny stuff. Great work. Thanks. OK, uh, where it's glossy, I'm not sure. Maybe it's glossy surface. Maybe it is. But maybe it's matte. Maybe it's semi-glossy. I don't see it, really. I, it's, uh, I don't remember how this phone looked like. But I completely not seeing it. Well, you know what? It's more glossy because I see, OK, okay there is some age. And it's dark reflection. So probably it's glossy. OK, then it's fine. Maybe a little bit more black reflection somewhere, so I'm not guessing. I shouldn't be guessing. It should be, you know, somewhere across. Because this black, this black, uh, one second, uh, what I'm talking about, about this, 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 this black. It's super, I mean, it may be part of design. I understand that it looks like it's not part of the design. But because you put it this way so nice, it may, be, it may look like a part of design. Uh, get some reflection across it. 
which will kind of completely tell us, hey, it's glossy, if it's glossy. If it's not, then, then it's not. OK, uh, this one. Whew. Nice, lots of colors. Uh, it's probably bubbles. Oh, it's bubbles. I was thinking, what is going on here? It's just, uh, you know, the uh, saw bubble. That's cool. Ever tuber, that's you. Where, where, which one? This one? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's cool. Not so glossy, though. But, you know, the concept is cool. I was thinking that, you know, some some gemstone, actually, um, because of this. OK, this one. Ooh, nice, 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 nice work. It's glossy. Yes, it's super nice. Uh, the spot, actually, it, it looks really cool. good. I don't see any issues here. The only thing that kind of questionable, and this is subjective, that white, almost white, it's pinkish uh, bottom. Why? Maybe it should be gold? Think about how it will look like if it will be uh, really warmer, close to yellow, close, no, not that much. I think it may work uh, better than just white, because there is no white elements actually on the subject. There is no. And this pink is cool that you have uh, behind, even though the colors of this um, of that, uh, ribbon is not the same. And it's not just the color, it's like uh, the temperature. It's different, so it would be better than you kind of put it together in the same. It may be brighter and darker, but you know, it's it's li this is a little bit orangish, and this is more like uh, more like a burgundy, you know, color. They really from different uh, schemas. And the bottom, but talking about glossiness, it's super cool. We have tons of reflections uh, that sharp, and uh, the rest is nice. Alrighty, uh, let's move to the next one. Woohoo! Guys, you're doing great <laughs> so far. If you like this video, if, you, if it's useful for you, please like it. Uh, please like it. Uh, it will help us uh, to do even better videos uh, for you. OK, this one, that's nice. It glossy. It's kind of cool angle, I see it. But first, Neds, you crop it too much on top. It's, it's never. Never. It's like, you know, sitting like this. I, I feel like, oh, what is going on? I, I want it like. So we need more room on top, especially for these type of subjects. Uh, give it, you know, some, some space. Uh, then reflections. You actually, you made it nice to look glossy, but you fail a little bit on the gradient, which is not a big deal here because it still looks good. It's super shiny. You have tons of bright, you know, colors on the background and everywhere. So it's not bad, but I would suggest to get a little bit better of, you know, this gradient, a little bit. But still, this is good, good one, like it. Except, you know, this need room here. Alrighty. Uh, oh, this is one of our students, uh, I remember this uh, shot. It's nice, it's nice. Cool concept, it's actually, it's jewelry, jewelry is glossy, so it's kind of <laughs> almost work for next. Uh, for next uh, challenge, this is jewelry. However, 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 you should, uh, you can't reuse it. It's not fair. You don't, if you submitted something for one challenge, it's not going to be transferred to another challenge. Let's, let's kind of, you have time? Go and shoot something. Go shoot, learn, put in your portfolio. Why not to do it? So it's cool here, uh, especially, you know, parts like this are really shiny. This is not as shiny a little bit, talking about metal, talking about metal. It could have a little bit more shininess, but again, it's just, I'm trying to be picky here, uh, because most of the time we have uh, nice glossy elements. I would add, uh, you know, a little, some shiny elements. You can do even dodge and burn, just to make it, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, reflective. But concept is so, super cool, thanks. Okay, this one, Whew. this is uh, the favorite of Foot G team, actually, we are talking about, you know, uh, discussing images. Uh, so uh, it's cool one. Well, of course, red color is a big attractor, uh, attractor uh, for anyone. Uh, Nemo, how about the shadows on the top right and left side? You know, I'm kind of going so, so fast that I cannot, I mean, and there is a delay. 
between what you see and what I talk about, like 20 seconds, it, we can't really do this easily, unfortunately. So I move on. Uh, this, is, this is good. I love this. Uh, it's just, wow, nice gradient, super cool gradient. What is super cool here, this uh, sharp reflection, super bright. Of course, it's a little bit of Photoshop because it's uh, probably it can be that, you know, uh, that white, but it definitely tells us that this is super glossy surface, so super glossy helmet, uh, which is good. Uh, which is not really good here is this. I mean, it's fine, but we do have some stuff that probably should be cleaned in Photoshop. Since, well, there is no lighting setup, I can't really talk uh, much about, you know, improving it, uh, because this is what we do uh, on the courses, critique and review. On certification program, we always require students set up, lighting setup, and then uh, we, I can see and tell, you know, how to adjust it to get better result. Here I'm just guessing. So it was something that doesn't really good, uh, look good uh, when reflected. It's not uh, super smooth. Uh, it has, um, well, it's not as good as here. So this is the main thing that either in the camera should be fixed or in post-production, probably post-production in this case. More work on this and it will be super, super cool one. Okay, uh, one more submission for the same, from the same guy and uh, it's good, it's, I like it. By the way, is it the crop? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, nice glass. Glossy, shiny, uh, definitely uh, it, it's a great, really great representation of uh, something shiny. It's done well, it's done well. Uh, I believe that it's glossy. Okay, uh, moving to the next one, which is uh, one of our favorites as well. well. There are many favorites, it's really. Uh, the watch, it's cool, uh, it has, it's shiny. But you know, it has a few things mm, that probably could be improved, but that's probably it could be improved. Uh, this is cool, you know, this is super cool. Uh, what about, and this is cool too, you know, this area, it has the gradient. Areas like this when there is no gradient, it's just uh, gray, they don't look that good. And, you know, the issue is this, not the issue, but you know, this is not a table that reflects here. I, I could understand, I, I could understand when we have a table that you, you can do anything, it's just uh, some um, kind of dual reflect, reflection from, but it's facing up, so you do control that area completely, and you can have such gradient all the way till this black. Same as here, I mean, this just extended, so it, it, it's possible, like you have here. Why didn't do it this? I mean, on the opposite side, it would be better. Then uh, post-production, it could be darker. You can have it uh, really dark here. You don't need to have all these kind of grayish uh, elements inside your shadow. It's that's not necessary. Okay. And uh, one more is again, this is subjective. The background that you choose, it's super cool background, but it's too. I mean, too many things going on. The subject gets lost. Again, this is subjective, but I feel, you know, all this stuff and subject it itself uh, has some lines. And this is where it gets lost. If your watch would be like completely, you know, seamless, without any patterns, without any anything, that may, it may look good because it will be on contrast uh, with the background. The watch has stuff, background has stuff, it's all in the focus. So this is where I would kind of play a little bit different, even though background is super nice. Yes, this you again, I, I, I know, I know. Uh, next one, ooh, nice. This is Splash, which is actually looks cool, kind of nice. Uh, actually, really nice, uh, we were talking last time about this, right, about Splashes, uh, we were discussing how to highlight uh, liquid when it's pouring to, to make it look nice. So this is good. Uh, the reflection is actually really nice. The gradients and everything. What you can do to improve it, uh, you can have a little bit more contrast on, let's say, on this gradient. A little bit more contrast, uh, meaning that the brighter part could be a little bit brighter. You know, that edge, which is actually the top, uh, the top one, uh, could be a little bit brighter. Again, this is suggestion. A suggestion. It's not like uh, there is a mistake. Uh, but yeah, it could be 
this one could be brighter just to make it a little bit more you know shiny yeah nice okay here we go uh clinique well there are a few issues it's probably uh you kind of starting in this so good efforts it's super um kind of kudos for doing uh stuff that is hard for you but you really need to do better reflections this is glossy stuff it doesn't look well it looks glossy because of the dark it's and you see that black reflection but it should be way better uh diffusers and light for this okay for this glossy it reflects all left side everything like 180 degree so we need to put a huge diffuser there coloring you know from top to the bottom and have some nice light on it and this diffuser based on the angle it should be behind on the left behind your subject not next to the camera but really behind because this is probably where the light is coming from again with that thing you can always see where it's coming from right and make it better and background what is going on with the background what what, is, what are you talking about what is it you have some doggy i don't know i mean who's kind of pissing <laughs> okay uh this one oh nice it's too it's too contrast for the background i understand completely on black background you want to shoot it this way it's fine shoot it be careful when you shoot on, on completely dark background if it has you know it if you have uh, so much bright areas that completely overexposed you may reconsider uh, doing that bright because of the background it's too much sometimes or i would suggest to put a uh, spot uh, you know the circular gradient on the background so it's not really super bright i mean super dark it will look better uh, this is kind of okay again uh, i would highlight it slightly different but it's fine since it's, since it's on a black background and yeah this so a little bit yeah one more diffuser you, you missed diffuser on this side next to the camera a large diffuser one spot and boom all this metal will have some nice gradient because it will be spotlight it's super cool and super easy actually it's very easy to shoot uh, anything like earrings or whatever uh, like those uh, earrings that i have for example that face in the camera it's it's really nice and easy and you know how it shouldn't let me interrupt myself let's say on black or white you make a little hole in the plastic you stick it there and it's a pin so you you kind of you fix it uh, from other side and you can do whatever you want on that surface when it's pin when earrings with pin or uh, stuff like this it's super you know easy anyway uh, let's move forward okay Vitalik uh, you kind of wasting some hard drives here <laughs> Have so many uh, when you know your huge array RAID 5 whatever gets upgraded what to do with all these drives I don't know uh, but it looks glossy it looks cool um, this guy a little bit you know different kid from different block <laughs> um, I'd say it's cool nice yeah sort of like a gradient shiny yeah it's more like a concept i guess the same guy yeah mm -hmm. abusing abusing dry, uh, hard drives ah. but yeah this is glossy it's cool uh, to see glossy like this uh with the gradient it yeah it definitely turns it into glossy and it's so deep it's so intense even though it's kind of it's not that contrast but still i perceive it as the glossy not as a matte which is cool okay next one uh, next one is this and well it's a good try again the splash is frozen the flying lemons are flying but overall this is not the way that you we work with the glossy materials watch the workshop these bottles really need to see diffuser I don't see this probably it was no diffuser but some light either soft box yeah strip box probably and without diffuser placed on front you know next to the camera it doesn't look good uh, lots of things uh, to learn here but again it's good try it's it's well you 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 get in there 
at least it looks glossy for sure, but it's too glossy. <laughs> I need to make it uh, nicer a little bit. Okay, I talked about this uh, previous submission, so it doesn't work this way because I've seen this watch. Actually, you know, I've seen that watch, right? And not probably I've seen it. Yeah, same thing actually. Yeah, it should be. Well, I know I talked it, so it's skipping. Uh, it was last time or before that. Okay, uh, it's glossy, nice. I like this. It's super nice on this side, you know, uh, talking about uh, this uh, this edge. This one is cool. Is cool. Why didn't do it uh, sharp edge here? You need to do it. It's glossy. It's fine to have sharp edge on glossy elements. I mean, on glossy surfaces. You you don't. If you have a gradient, one side should be sharp. No reason to have it uh, smooth. It's fine because you have here the gradient, so it's fine this way. But again, here is sharp cutoff line, here is sharp cutoff line. Okay, nice, nice light, N nice work. Okay, uh, I'm here again. It's cool. The concept, everything is so cool, nice. But you have too much things overexposed. I'm sorry, man. It's just uh, this top and you know these sides are super, super overexposed. Mm. Gemstones are our kings, queens, and whatever you know. You you can't really uh, do them, you know, stuff like this. And think about this: if it has gemstones, it should be highlighted, and it's completely boom, like it's no gemstones at all. For this, you need to have. No, it's not a cone, even though you can shoot with cone, but you won't get uh, light like this nice uh, for the you know for the background. Uh, you need to basically do the separate shots, double exposure. First exposure with nice uh, sort of like a U-shaped uh, diffuser around the camera with just hole in the middle, you know what I'm talking about, right? U-shaped, sort of like a bandit, uh, your diffuser, and make a hole for the camera. And put lots of light for all gemstones, everything should be really highlighted. This should be probably, now this is kind of cool, but if there is gemstone, it should be visible. You shoot it, and then you do the shot for the shoes like you did with, you know. So it, it's, it's really, you cannot put everything in one and make it that nice and uh, so it's composite image for sure. Okay. And this one. I love this kitchenware, you know, silverware. <clears throat> uh, really nice, unfortunately, a low resolution, at least on my uh, screen. But this is super cool. I love it. You know, all these uh, ingredients. It's not um, super engagement, engaging in terms of, uh, you know, composition. It's too simple. But the way that uh, Antonio did glossiness here, I mean, showed the glossiness, showed uh, it's, it's really nice. This as well. And the same one here. It's perfect. Actually, it's it's cool one. What is that? Yeah, that's cool one. I like it. A little bit. No, we do have. Yeah, it's it's kind of it, it's super soft. It's on the edge of saying, "Hey, it's matte." And actually, it's a little bit matteish because of this. I would uh, I would suggest to have somewhere a little bit sharper sharper edge. We almost have no sharp edge. This is, looks way more glossy than this. So, uh, be careful. Okay, <clears throat> Ooh, nice. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> How you make them jump in like that and under this uh, oil? Cool, cool. Yeah, nice. You know, you, you, you've been submitting this stuff for the splash. I, I remember it. It, it was different shot, so it's completely fine. Uh, glossiness, it's done well here, not much glossy things, and the glossiest uh, possible, it's a liquid, uh, the oil, and this piece, you definitely can highlight better this little piece. Even though it's little, it's, it's somewhere, it's not the most important part of the uh, shot, but if you talk about glossiness, this can be done better, the glossy elements, okay? Uh, yeah, the rest is super nice. Okay, this one is skipping, we talked about this, and okay, this one is another glossy. 
So guys, what do you think? I think it's done well. It's done well. We do have a few things that uh, look super shiny, super glossy. It, it saves a lot uh, of the image. We still, I, I would love to see a little bit more of shininess on larger areas. Uh, for example, if we talk about uh, this part. If you would have nice bright, like here, you see how it's bright here. Um, you know, line with the gradient, it would be pretty nice. You see like here, we, you have uh, this, uh, uh, you know, the gradient was really bright edge a little bit. It would be cool if you have it a little bit more. Again, this is what looks really glossy. The rest, on the edge of acceptance, sort of, because it's, it could have a little bit uh, better reflections. But good work, uh, good job. Even though I don't like the angle and, you know, the pen, it could be something in the composition. But not going to talk about this. It's too much for me to try to understand what is wrong here. It's good, but something is, is not right. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? What do we have here? La, la, la. Uh, nice. What well, I can tell, woo! Very cool, and it's not easy uh, to, to play with depth of field when you do product photography, and it's one of the good examples uh, when depth of field works really well. Uh, depth of field is kind of, it's really good here, and um, well, yeah, plays all this bokeh and everything, and uh, it, you know, we have subject in super good focus, even, you know, two of them, both of them. Uh, very nice, and look at this glossy. This is glossy and it's immediately glossy. And this is the best part of it. I mean, it's amazingly good. Uh, this is good too. I mean, you, you did a really good well, I mean, you really good uh, job on creating gradients, but you need to do Photoshop. If you want to make it, you know, like super cool image for your portfolio and you do have this, the copyright, right? The watermark. If you do it, make sure to put as much effort as possible on your image that has your name. I mean, really, for example, this tells me that you are lazy or you don't know Photoshop, either this or that. Why you didn't clean this if you know Photoshop? Because you're lazy. So if, I mean, do I need to hire you if uh, I need a uh, photographer? Maybe you do. So you see what I'm saying, right? Make sure that it's the best what you can do, especially if it has name on the image. Uh, because it, it's good work. I mean, you just didn't finish it a little bit. Uh, you know, the bar is high when the work is good. Okay, here we go. Ooh, ooh, interesting. Huh. <laughs> That's cool. You know, I like it. Uh, there is no brand. Well, it's fine, but a little bit unusual. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It just, you know, like, I usually have some brand or whatever. Uh, the glossiness is super nice here, guys. This is the way that we do glossy materials. Sharp cut of line, black uh, reflection, then nice gradient. And we do have a reflection from the surroundings, uh, which looks really cool here. Uh, this is cool too. I like it. So, um, really nice, really nice. Uh, this one, we almost at the end. We have uh, one more, actually, stay with me. One more and uh, we'll be done. Uh, let's see. What is going on here? I mean, it, it's, I kind of, it, it's nice, but what is that? What's the pattern? I'm trying to understand. Is it like... No, it looks like it's just a normal uh, square sort of... Like a cube. The, the glossy, glossy thing. But something is going on. You probably did some cleanup in Photoshop or whatever. But before the cleanup, you didn't manage to make nice reflection. I mean, something is going on there. It shouldn't look like this. I mean, it, something is really, really strange. So, th this part is good. Even though we need to see the gradient. If you have such a large area uh, completely overexposed, this white, it represents, you know, completely uh, overexposed part, shiny part of the subject. That's fine, but if it's that wide, we don't overexpose huge areas. This little one, 
Uh, one second, I'll show you. Mm. This one, this line, this white line, is fine to be completely overexposed because it's small, it's narrow. This one should be a gradient. It no way that you just can blow it away and blow it up like, like this now uh, with the light. And this is something, I'm sorry, I have no idea what is going here. Reconsider. <laughs> Uh, you see, this one is cool too, you have some gradients starting, but it could be a little bit better. It's fine, it's fine, especially if uh, the middle would be nice. But because of, you know, it looks really artificial, all this zebra that they call, it, it's really strange. Just like not from this shot. The rest nice, the rest is nice, no problem uh, in the background, even though I'm not really a big fan of almost middle uh, division between, you know, uh, between ground and uh, table. Ideally it would be somewhere here. Why not? Um, a rule of third. And the last one, okay, uh, last one and after that you're gonna find the winner. Uh, you contact us and uh, receive any course uh, that listed on in under individual courses that you like, okay? Um, and what about this? You already know guys, right, that there is not much glossy here. And looks like it looks like that it's not glossy by itself. I mean, the the surface it doesn't look glossy. Otherwise, it's hard to explain uh, why why it looked like this. Uh, it's not glossy. It's interesting though. It's it's really like uh, the concept is cool. On darkness, you know, it, there is something in it. But because uh, I don't know, I would say that it's probably not a good subject, first of all. It just some, I mean, it looks like it's cheap. And if you work for your portfolio, it's, get, uh, it's better to, to get more expensive. And it's not about the money, but it should look like, you know, uh, because all these things, it's almost like, you know, fixators for the, uh, for the cap. It's, I mean, I don't see this in Lancome or uh, in, in, in good brands. And the finish, the whole finish, you know, with this uh, line, um, like, you know, the, uh, when you do stamps on the plastics or whatever, uh, this line, it's, it's, not, it's not good either. So better, it's a cool idea, really cool concept. Get something better. Plus, of course, top. Don't cut it, guys. Never crop it that tight. Give the room, especially on top, for vertical subjects. It, it doesn't look good when it's like, boom almost like this. Cherry on top. Cherry on top. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, cherry on top. Already. Cherry on top studio. Oh, cherry on top. Yes. Yes. Name of the studio is good. No, it, it's, it's cool. Like I said, uh, he really, oh man, it's getting cold here. <laughs> so um, it, it's cool. You just need to have a different subject. Already. So, Oh, no. The winner. The winner is this. Uh, and it's, it's really hard. I can tell you that it's super, super hard to find the winner for me. I just feel like, you know, I'm really bad guy who's doing some, well, something bad because I cannot really uh, grab us all of the good shots. And there are so many good shots. And we even didn't agree about, you know, what, uh, what is the best... Uh, among our team, I mean, there are different, uh, like I said, uh, our guys really like this one. But if it wouldn't be this, uh, I would nominate this. I mean, I, I would get this uh, other first place. But this is important part. I mean, it, it could be like this. I mean, it's, it's really good image. The bar is really high. And because of this, the winner is this. It's very fine. I mean, very nice uh, shot, uh, Amir, congratulations. Uh, uh, well, if you are already, I, I think, I like 99% positive that uh, you are the, um, you're taking our courses. So I hope you have courses that you are interested in and you don't have access yet. If you have, let's say, unlimited membership where you can get any course, I mean, you, you automatically uh, have access to everything. Uh, then, uh, well, talk to our guys, we'll find out the price for you, because this work is really good. Not perfect, as you can see, but uh, this is one of the best shots uh, from uh, this submission. 
So thank you so much, guys. Uh, next, next Friday, please shoot jewelry. Shiny jewelry with what shiny jewelry is? It's metal plus gemstones. This is how we defined jewelry. Okay, uh, gemstones because it should be different from the previous one. And uh, make sure to set it 40G challenge, 40G challenge tag on Instagram. It should be new submission, not you add, you cannot add uh, your, I mean, this tag for old pictures. You need to submit it. And uh, next Friday, I'll be talking and choosing the winner. Already, three maximum submissions per one photographer. Thank you. And the third, or the second best shot. Well, the second is the ha, man. You get in. You get in. <laughs> it's it's hard. Uh, so second, I would said uh, I would say this uh, the helmet. And the third. So this would be second and third. It's it's super hard. I love many. I mean, this is super cool too. Uh, one of one of the best. I like this one, but again. Uh, it's not super uh, deep in terms of uh, composition. So many good. This is good too. I don't know. I'm not going to talk too much. So, next Friday, jewelry shot, 40G challenge. Like this video, share this video. See you next Friday, guys. Thank you for, uh, for your interest. Thank you for your time. I hope it was useful. Okay? That's it. Have a good weekend. Everything will come back to normal. <laughs> oh, ah, awesome. He finished uh, e-commerce course. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And goodbye. See you next Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific time.